Okay, here we go on our arithmetic sequences continued. So still discussing what those are and what they mean. So when you're doing multiplication, what you're really doing is repeating addition. So if we were to look at something like one, five, 19, et cetera, we're adding four every time. So to go from one to five, you added four one time. To go from five to nine, the five to nine, well, you really added four two times. So we can rewrite that as two times four. Adding four twice is two times four. To go to 13, we were adding four to the nine, but we were also adding four three times. So then if we're on the fourth one, we're adding it four times, et cetera. So this P of one means that I added it one time. This P of four actually means I added it four times. That's why we start at P zero and then you add it once, twice, et cetera. So P six means you added it six times and that can be written as multiplication. So now we can rewrite this as P of six is P of O plus six times four, where four was our D or our common difference. Now, if we kept going with this and tried to get to P of 50, that would definitely take some time. So instead, we're gonna look at, wait a minute, if P of six means multiply it six times, P of 50 just means multiply it 50 times. So we're gonna keep working through this. If I wanted to get P seven, that would be 29 just by continuing to add, but let's try and see if it works. So could P7 be that PO plus seven times four, which is one plus 28, which is 29. It is, so it does work. So if I wanted P of 15, then that 15 is how many times I'm multiplying. So where I'm going with this is this brings me to my explicit formula to get the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. So an arithmetic sequence is gonna be this PO plus ND. So PN is whatever you're looking for. PO is your initial value. So the PO stands for the initial value. <coughs> Sorry. The N is whatever your time is, you know, whatever you're growing by. And then D is going to be that common difference. So that's one of the formulas that you will want to know is <clears throat> this particular one. <clears throat> okay. So we've got that. Moving on to some practice problems. So I always recommend <clears throat> pausing the video and trying these on your own. I'll go through a few and then whatever um, we don't, you would wanna go ahead and check against the answer key. So this question nine says find P20 in this arithmetic sequence. You get 103 and you get D for three for. <coughs> <clears throat> So it's always helpful to have the formula already written so you know what you're filling in. So if I want to find P of 20, I need to fill in a PO, which is 103, and N, which in this case would be 20, and a D, which would be 3. So they gave me my PO, my D, and then N is 20 because we want P of 20. So that would end up giving me 103 plus 60 is 163. <clears throat> so I could give P of 20 is 163. So then this one would say, okay, well, what's P of 12? So N is 12, D is now negative three, PO is 42. So I would go ahead and put all that in, P of 12 is 42. Again, really helpful to just have that formula written there so you know what you're looking at. And that just becomes a minus. So P of 12 is equal to six. 
So in the next section, it's a couple of practice problems about when do you, just using recursive versus explicit. So just make sure to check the answer key for those. And then we're gonna get into more examples of now making it something called linear growth and decay. <clears throat> so that notation we just learned right here is really a linear formula. When D is positive, it's growth. When D is negative, then it's decay. <clears throat> and so this is also your typical slope intercept form that you may be a little more familiar with, where M is your slope, which is the same as D. D down here is slope. B is your y-intercept, <clears throat> which is the same thing as PO, which is your initial value. So putting it into this formula now brings it to be linear growth. So the rate at which something is increasing or decreasing is called your slope. It's going up, it's a positive slope. If it's going down, it's a negative slope. This would be linear growth this would be linear decay. Okay, so say we were to buy a plant that is one centimeter high and we watched it grow. And this is showing at its initial value, it was one centimeter. Then after, <clears throat> these are days, after one day, it grew an inch. One day, it grew an inch. One day, it grew an inch. So that's one over one. So in that case, PO is one, D is one, and N would be your number of days. So you could put it together into an equation. So what we're gonna grab off a graph is we're gonna say, what's the slope? Slope is rise over run. <clears throat> How much did I go up? One. How much did I go over? One. And then we're gonna grab that initial value or PO. So I've got my D, I've got my PO, I can put it together and I can have that equation. So that would be just an example of linear growth. I have a little more written down here. If I wanted to figure out day five, I could look at the chart. On day five, I have the point five, six, so it's five centimeters, but I could also put it in here and get one plus five times one, which is also six. <clears throat> so now I could predict the height of the plant in the following scenarios, I could figure out what the plant would be on day nine. So again, the PN is one centimeter plus N times one centimeter. So I'm putting in my Ns. So for nine, it would be day nine is P9, would be one centimeter plus nine times one or 10 centimeters. And then P30 would be one centimeter plus 30 times one, which would be 31 centimeters. So that would be our example for our <clears throat> plant. Next one we wanna look at is a medication dosage. Um, it's frequently administered based on your weight, okay? Um, but we also have something called a max dose. So if you weigh, for example, 160 pounds, you might be given this around 70, but the max might actually be 130. So we're just looking at those two. So in this, the blue is what you're usually given based on your weight. And then the red is the max dose based on your weight. Okay. So what would be the usual dosage for a person that weighs 180? So in that case, we are looking at this nice linear growth model. We would grab it off the chart. It's about 80 as well. So if you weigh 180 pounds, you get about 80 milligrams. But now it's saying, well, what's the max dose? And if I read that off the chart, it's 140 milligrams. 
notes to make sure you read the chart and just kind of understand what it's saying. Each of these is an X, Y point. You can read your weight with your usual dose versus your max dose. Now they're just great example of linear growth. For examples of linear decay, decay now is where the slope is going down. It's a negative slope. The line is decreasing. So again, it's still the basic PN equals PO minus DN. Your slope will come up negative. So if I look at radioisotope dating techniques, um, I'm told each plant eats, each animal eats um, <clears throat> plant ingests um, a mixture of organic compounds. Okay. So when the animal or the plant dies, it's released. You can, you know, read what that has for you. So what we're just showing is solely just what, what linear decay might look like. You know, here was the beta disintegrates. Here's the age. You know, we can just kind of date some of these items. So what would be the beta disintegration for 9,000 years based on the graph above? So again, the age is in thousands. So we're going right here and it would be five. And then if an object has 12, what's the age? So I would go down and that's gonna put me at two which represents 2,000 years. So two, which is really 2,000. So cool. So just a nice little fun example. And that's where I'm going to pause for now. We're going to jump into linear functions next, which will be a separate video.